Move on to the next one. Love is not painful. How many of you have felt, I'm in love with this person and I'm in so much pain? <laughs> How many of you have felt that in your life at some point? Most of us. From God's perspective, you were not in love with this person. <laughs> That's pretty confronting, isn't it? Don't you think? That every single time you're in pain in a love relationship, you are no longer in love. You are no longer actually acting in harmony with love. Every time you're in pain. Because love isn't painful. It's unloving things that are painful. Untruthful things are painful. But love isn't painful. Now, can you see how that might apply in your lives? Like, how many of you believe that love is painful in your life? Look at all the songs. What do they say? Love hurts. Love hurts. <laughs> and, we get, and we all get like involved in the thing, don't we? Like, yeah, love hurts. Yeah, love hurts. You know, like it becomes. You know, and the reason why these songs appeal to us so much because so many of us have had this experience where we have felt love to be painful. And so all of these songs reinforce this belief that we have that love is painful. And uh, in reality, love isn't painful at all. It's all the other things, aside from love, that get painful at times, but it's certainly not love. So let's have a look at a few of the uh, examples of that. If I'm in pain or suffering, then I'm actually breaking a law of love. So you know how when you say to yourself, oh, you know, I really love this man, but it's so painful, it's terrible, you know, he does this and he does that and I feel so bad. Who's breaking the law of love? I am, if that's me, because I'm the one in pain. And if I'm the one in pain, I'm the one breaking the law of love. Now, it took me ages to work that out. It seems pretty simple, but... In terms of putting that into practice in your own life, that actually takes a lot of emotional processing, trust me. And, and that's why in my own life, like I had a relationship with one lady who I only saw once a month, and the rest of the time I basically cried, <laughs> waiting to see her again, right? Because, because in the end, like, I was in so much pain thinking that this was love, and it wasn't love at all. So what was your yeah, the error was this terrible, terrible neediness for my soulmate that I didn't want to grieve. And so what I wanted was a relationship with somebody who would give me that feeling, but I attracted a woman who wanted to keep me away except for once a month, right? So that it would trigger this soulmate grief that I had to experience. And so you were going lesson Which one was that, now? <laughs> <laughs> certainly, yeah, certainly ignoring the uh, lesson of love of self. So why would I stay in a relationship with somebody who is willing to treat me that badly by just not wanting to be with me? Then obviously, uh, you know, there must be an emotion in me that I don't feel like I was unworthy. I feel like I was unworthy to be with. And um, is there another lesson as well? Fire away. Mm -hmm. Love's a gift. Yes, I was expecting love from this person and not understanding that love is a gift that she didn't want to give me. No, no. <laughs> is that all I was it? But it's pretty hard, it's pretty hard truth to come to, to know that actually if we truly love someone in a relationship, we don't have any expectations on them. Yeah. I still struggle with that. Yeah. It's a big lesson, it's like, no matter, the, the feelings that I have now is no matter what Mary does, no matter who she's with, no matter where she goes, what desire she wants, who, what man she wants to be with, I still feel like I can love her without being upset with any of those choices. I'm not at that. <laughs> so woe is me if I cheat on her. <laughs> but the, uh, 
you get to that point through processing lots of emotion, <laughs> trust me. And uh, so I've had to release lots and lots and lots of emotions uh, to actually get to the point where I can feel that. And that's why we're also at the point where I can discuss those things without being, you know, without getting upset and angry all the time. Does that make sense? Because once you've released those things emotionally, you can be in that space. Now, that is actually also the most powerful space. Because what does it feel like when you're loved unconditionally from somebody? Isn't it, isn't it the most beautiful feeling of freedom? And what, what happens with that somebody? What do you find? You, you feel drawn to them, don't you? You don't feel like going away from them, do you? You feel drawn to them. So it's actually a more powerful place to be in terms of the attraction. Thanks for pointing out those injuries of mine there, Yeah, yeah, it's really good. You see, we can be in so much disharmony with love and not know it, right? And, and if we're in pain, that is proof. That's proof we're out of harmony with love. So every time you're in pain in a loving relationship, look really sincerely at yourself. Because there's something going inside of yourself that that is not love. It's out of harmony with love. You need to look at that really carefully. That's a big lesson. Love is not painful. <laughs>